Welcome back, everybody. This is Tatro, and this is episode 10 of the Ableton Live for Beginner series, the final episode of this series. And this is an important one. This is the part two to our previous lesson where we started creating our own track, and I was walking you through the process of making music in Ableton Live's session view, sketching out some ideas. In today's chapter, we're going to take those same ideas, bring them over to arrangement view, start structuring them in a song, and I'm going to show you some things like how to use automation, thinking about mixing, copying ideas to other instruments, so how you can take these simple loops and kind of create a simple song structure that's about two minutes long. If you are enjoying this series and you learned a lot from this series, please let me know in the comments down below. If you've made it all the way from part one to part 10, I really want to hear from you. You can at me on Twitter or post something in your Instagram story with some music that you've made based on what you've learned here in this lesson. But this has been great. Uh, it's not the end. Of course, I have live streams and lots of other tutorials and I'll keep making videos on my channel. But this is just the end of this specific beginner series that has been brought to you by DistroKid. And I can't thank them enough for jumping in and sponsoring such an important series for me and my viewers. Without further ado, let's get right into making some music. All right, so let's get right to work here. If you're following along at home, like I've explained, you don't need to have the exact same musical ideas that I have, but let me just review the parts that we have so that this can all make sense and we can kind of follow along this way. So the first part I have is sort of a instrument that's playing chords. Even though it's playing these individual notes arpeggiated through, uh, they are still kind of implying a chord progression. On top of that, I use the same exact instrument, this guitar instrument, to create just like a single line melody. So we have chords, melody, of course we also have drums. That's pretty simple. We have a bass line that follows the root note of our chords. It is following the root note of the arpeggiated guitar. We have this note pattern here in the bass. We have the same exact note pattern in the guitar. And then we have another melodic instrument, which is a keyboard sound. And in this melodic sound, we actually have two different melodies to play with in two different session clips. And speaking of other versions of these instruments or other musical ideas within these instruments, in the drums, we have the full drum pattern with kick, hi-hat, and snare. Then we have a version with just hi-hat and snare. And we have a version with just hi-hat. So top end, well, minimal top end, then top end you know, with snare, and then full with kick. This is important, this kind of pattern here. So where we have chords, melody one, drums, bass, melody two, each one of those parts is gonna play a key role in us arranging. And the reason in the last lesson that we actually created different versions or that we added more than one melody in another melodic instrument is because now we need to shape this into a song and we can't just have the same ideas playing over and over and over again, that will make things really boring. So what I would like to start to do is to arrange this. We are going to bring our clips over into arrangement view. By pressing tab, you can view arrangement view. You can also use these buttons up here in the corner to switch between session and arrangement view. Once we go to arrangement view, there's no turning back, or I would like to not have to turn back. So I'm just gonna to touch on something really quick we didn't cover in the last lesson, which is mixing your drum rack. Even though we're not properly mixing right now, I'm thinking that kick is a little bit too loud. So your approach might be, I'm double clicking on that title header to get to the drum rack view. You can also use these buttons in the bottom right to go between MIDI and device view, which will show us the drum rack. Your first instinct might be to go to the kick, double click on it, and maybe like bring the gain down of the sample or something. I would not do this for mixing purposes. Instead, with a drum rack, we can actually open it up using this arrow. And here we can now mix all the individual pieces of the drum kit. So if I think the kick is a bit too loud, I might bring it down a couple dB. So you can open up that drum rack. 
Just wanted to touch on that before we move over to arrangement view. Let's start by grabbing our initial chord idea. That's the first idea we came up with. And I think I'd actually like to start the song this way. You might have noticed these brackets here when we went to arrangement view. We're going to use those in a minute. For the moment, I'm just going to stretch out that start point to the beginning of the song, and I will use those accordingly later. Hold that thought. You're going to also notice that everything is grayed out because if I hit play again, we're actually still hearing audio or we're, we're still hearing these ideas being played from session view. So even if I'm in arrangement view, everything's playing, even though we don't see everything here. To tell live that we want to now start working in arrangement view, we want to only hear what's happening in arrangement view. We have to click this orange button here, this orange play button. So now we will only hear what's going on in arrangement view. Great. So the chords are there. Let's actually start to bring in most of our ideas. I'm going to bring in this top row, this first scene, as we call it in Ableton Live. I'm going to bring in these four clips by selecting the first clip, holding shift, and then selecting the last clip, which selects all four in this range. I'm going to grab hold of them. I'm going to click and drag. I'm not letting go. You can see the little icon there, and I'm going to hit tab. Then I'm going to drop these into arrangement view. I'm just going to drop them down further in the timeline because I don't know when I'm going to use them yet. This is kind of like a junk pile here that we're going to pull ideas from. Now I made one mistake here, which we are going to hear very clearly if I click play uh, and solo uh, this guitar instrument here. Let's listen. I don't remember that being one of my musical ideas. And the reason that happened is because I dropped these clips onto the wrong tracks. Uh, as you can see, this one is labeled hi-hat, so it obviously should be on the drum tracks, but I dropped this whole uh, selection of clips in one track higher than they should be. That can be very easy, very easy mistake to make. Now that I've dropped them in here, if I solo this track that has the hi-hat pattern, oh, now I'm hearing the hi-hat. And I'm going to think in arrangement in terms of like four and eight bars at a time. You can see those numbers at the top here. If our intro is four bars. I actually might want another melody to happen there. This melody in the keyboard. That's a very nice melody, but I want to save it for later. I actually now want to grab the simpler melody from the electric keyboard and have this play during our intro. Let's unsolo that. I actually really like that as an intro. Let me go ahead and duplicate just the guitar for now. I'm going to save this melody just have it play once there in the intro. And maybe we could actually introduce the hi-hats here. And I'm gonna duplicate this clip so that it also plays at bar five. And I'm also gonna shorten this. So now what we have are two musical ideas that are playing, two ideas bouncing off each other for the first two bars. Then we'll introduce a new sound in bars three to four. And then we'll have to start working on bars five through eight. Again, we're taking this four bars at a time. So we have our intro. And let's say to add a little more drama here, I'm actually going to drop out the hi-hats at that uh, fourth beat, the fourth beat of bar four, which will help us with this transition. Okay, and then here at bar five, I think our full drums should actually come in. So I'm gonna hit tab. I'm going to grab the full drum pattern and lay that in right there. Okay, now since we've introduced the drums, I'm actually pretty comfortable just having only guitar and drums here at this moment. Um, but let's make it a little more interesting using automation. So the first half is fine. These first two bars is fine. By the time we get to bar seven and eight, I'd like to introduce 
a little bit of reverb automation. And I'm going to use the return reverb, send this drum sound to some reverb, but only on the snare hits. Or maybe even every other snare hit. I was just doing that live with my mouse in my hand, but let's enable automation view here so we can see the automation lanes. And let's click on our reverb, make sure that we are automating the reverb here. Let's zoom in a bit. Let's find the snare hits. I'm thinking every other snare hit. I highlight the section that I want to automate, you know, just throw that reverb totally on and it'll sound like this. In fact, I don't even need to have it be that long. I only need to have it as long as the snare happens. And let's do it to the snare as well. And you know, let's have it happen on that fourth time as well. Cool. So now we have another four bar section that is unique with the full drums. Now, if I duplicate this full drum pattern as we probably will want to, you'll notice that the automation also got copied. If I undo that and I lock this automation envelopes, which is project wide, when I duplicate this, it actually won't copy that. And no matter what, if I drag this pattern off, it will leave the automation in place. Whereas before, if this locking was off, if I drag the pattern over here, the automation comes with it. So that's a preference thing. Just make sure you're not copying over uh, automation that you might not necessarily want to be copying over. I'm using A as a shortcut there to go into automation mode and out of automation mode. Okay, so from here, I'm going to duplicate the guitar again. Let's introduce the guitar melody as well. Let's also introduce the bass in this moment. Let's hear this section at bar nine. Great, so we've got about 40 seconds of music already just using the ideas that we've already composed. This is about 12 bars of music. I'm pretty satisfied with what we have so far. We haven't used the drum pattern that only contains hi-hat and snare. So let me hit tab again and go grab the hi-hat and snare pattern and drop it in here. Let's sort of build up a mid section where we're gonna lose kick. Let's continue to have bass though. I'm gonna duplicate the bass over. We haven't gotten rid of this guitar yet, but I'm a little worried about getting rid of it at this stage because it's playing the chords. So I'm going to copy that over as well. And let's just hear what this sounds like for a second. You know, I think actually one easy idea we can do here is if I double click on this pattern, I hit command A and then shift up. We're going to go up an octave. And that creates a nice variation to the pattern. However, the sample, since it's playing at a higher pitch, is much shorter. So that doesn't really work. Let me experiment and put this musical idea onto the keyboard instrument. And then how about if we keep this melody? Okay, I kind of like transitioning to the keyboard instrument here, but here's what I want to do. Let's duplicate over the guitar again. And let's ease this transition over to the keyboard sound by fading this out instead of abruptly dropping it out. Now I could automate the track volume here, but as I've spoken about in previous chapters, we don't really want to do that for mixing purposes. So I'm going to open up the side menu here and go to audio effects and find the utility tool. I've dropped the utility tool in now, and we are going to automate the gain. I'm in automation mode, pressing A or right here. And I'm going to draw some points on this line by double clicking. Draw. I'm going to actually draw three points, uh, one at the beginning, one at the end, and then one somewhere in the middle that I'll then move along to the end. This way, this automation only lasts this long. I can change that later, but uh, I'm just going to keep it that way for now.
Okay, let's keep playing with these melodies. So now we could have a section. We could have a section where these melodies play with each other, but as you can hear, it sounds quite empty without playing the chord sounds. Pardon the interruption really quick, but I have to tell you that this series would not have been made possible without DistroKid. DistroKid is the best way to get your music in all the places that it needs to be, like Spotify, Apple Music, even TikTok, you know, the places people are actually hearing and finding new music. I actually just released my track Escape via the DistroKid app, which was very, very convenient. And I've been releasing music with DistroKid ever since, even before they ever sponsored this channel. It's super easy, one annual fee, and you can upload as much music as you want. But they also have a bunch of extras for their artists, and I've been telling you about them throughout this series. And I want to tell you about one brand new one, a new mastering service that you can add on to your already existing DistroKid account called Mixia. Since this is a beginner series, the idea of mastering might seem very overwhelming when you're just trying to make your own music. But with Mixia, it's as easy as just uploading your track and then listening back to the generated master. This can help bring your music in line with a lot of the other music that people are listening to on streaming services, and you even have some very simple control. You can change the intensity of your master track, and you can also change the balance, the EQ, whether it's a warmer or a brighter sounding track. Once you're done, you're able to download several different high quality versions of your track, different sample rates and file types, and you can go straight into the DistroKid upload form and share it on all the streaming services. You get unlimited song previews of mastered songs and one free download. Check that out, see if it's something that you'd like to use, and then you can start creating unlimited mastered tracks for $99 a year. You don't wanna to have to worry about all the complicated things that go into mastering and you're just trying to be independent and get your music out there. This is a convenient, efficient, easy way to do that. And it connects right to your distributor, DistroKid. And don't forget that by using the link in my description, you can get 7% off your annual DistroKid account. And that also helps to support the channel. So thank you all so much. Thanks DistroKid for sponsoring this series. And let's get back into the tutorial. So what I'm gonna do now is actually duplicate this electric piano track. I'm gonna get rid of the melodies on it. I'm gonna use this exclusively as the keyboard track that plays the chords. So I'm even gonna move this previous idea down here so that these are now separated. One of these electric piano tracks is responsible for playing the melodies. One of them is responsible for playing these arpeggiated chords. I think I'm pretty happy with that, but I think we could for sure spice it up with a little bit more automation. So let me figure out the best way to do that. I think we could make the reverb go bigger by automating the decay on the keyboard instrument. Again, I'm gonna do the thing where I make three points there so that the automation kind of resets itself at the end of this clip. Let's not make it too, too big. Making the reverb too big is just gonna make our mix muddy, but I do wanna kind of dramatically make the reverb kind of big. And then also use the dry wet to send the keyboard to more and more reverb. So we're hearing less and less of the dry signal over time. That might be a little too aggressive. And the reverb might be a little bit too long. So maybe we can get away with just automating the dry wet. I'm experimenting here in real time. And as you're making your music, I think it's important to just try different things. Go with your instincts, go in one direction. But if one idea doesn't work out, don't be afraid to move off of it and try something new. Another idea, since I want this to be this kind of spacey mid section, like kind of middle bridge kind of section, uh, is what if we use delay? And if we use it on this guitar instrument, it could space things out a bit. I'm gonna use the return delay and hear what it sounds like. That sounds pretty good, but I wish the delays kept going a little bit longer. And we can actually edit the delay that's on the return track on B. And I can turn the feedback up and I can even engage the filter so it only is doing a bit of high end. Now let's hear what that sounds like. Now the delay should last longer. What if it was only low end? Uh, 
I prefer the high end. Okay, great. So again, we're going to automate that. We don't want to just put it 100% here to the delay because that'll affect everything that came before it. Let's automate only this section. And a quick way to do that is to just highlight this clip, hover over the automation line so that it's blue, and then click and drag up. Be careful you don't go outside the bounds of where you want to go. And now, just that section will be sent to the delay. And another thing that will happen as you're doing the arrangement phase is you might realize some mixing things along the way. And it's okay to do a bit of mixing and think about your mix on the fly as you go. This is something I do all the time. So an idea that just occurred to me is that we have these two counter melodies playing and I think they do counter each other well, but mix wise, I think they could each have their own place. So I could take the guitar and I could pan it a bit to the right. Let's say maybe 20 to the right. That might be too much. And then I could take the keyboard melody and pan it 20 to the left. That's a subtle difference, but hey, that's fine for now. I think there's more work to be done on this section, but now what I wanna do is sort of bring this slowly to a close by going ahead and copying our most dense section here, the one with the full drums. Just like that, I'm gonna highlight, I'm, I'm using the brackets again, I forgot to mention that, sorry, I know we were talking about that, but I can use these brackets to loop a specific section with the looping function. I can use them to be recording in and out points, or I can use them to select a bunch of clips in a column here, in a section, uh, press Command C to copy, and then I can paste them right there. So now we can come out of that bridge section. Right there. I'm going to copy this piano melody that we haven't used since the intro. I'm going to put that there as well. And let's hear what it sounds like going from bar 17 to bar 21. Let's see if this is a satisfying transition. And this is supposed to be like a gentler ambient section. It's pretty good, but I think it just needs a bit of motion. I also know I'm going to want to duplicate this section and have it be twice as long. So I'm going to select them all and hit command D. Now we have a section that is twice as long selecting them all once again by using these brackets here. So in trying to work in the limitations of some of the instruments we already have, which you don't have to do, but I'm gonna continue on with that. And I'm gonna duplicate this electric piano track that is playing our melody. I'm gonna get rid of everything in that track. I'm gonna arm it and let's go ahead and I'm going to add just a very simple melody on top of this. With some movement. I'm also going to raise up the attack on this sound. That's why we get less of that pluck at the beginning. And now let me just experiment with something. I'm going to hit play. I like that. And what it does is it just gives us a little something on top um, to play. I used Capture MIDI to just grab what I played. And here's what I want to do. For the first half, I'm going to split this in half by hitting Command E. The 
puts a split in this clip. Let me undo that and show you that again. This is one clip right now. If I split this in half and hit Command E, it creates a split. What I actually wanna do is duplicate this so that the beginning, the first half of this full section is a bit simpler. stretch that out again. So now at the end here, we'll have those notes going up. Another thing that I noticed is that this G kind of doubles that G in the other melody and it's making, it's causing problems. So I'm actually just gonna get rid of it. And then here it's the same melody again, but in the second half it goes up and makes like a more epic transition. Of course, we can go in here, hit Command A and Command U, which will quantize the notes. Great, and now I'm gonna duplicate that keyboard idea again. Let's bring in the uh, keyboard playing the chords again. This is gonna basically function as an outro. This is gonna be a very short track, but it's just for the purpose of showing you how you could start making your own tracks, of course. Following this process, thinking about arrangement, thinking about your sections, all this is really, really important. And of course, your compositions, your music will get more advanced the more comfortable you get with the software and the more comfortable you get making music. Remember this one with the automation where it fades out? I actually wanna copy that over. I'm gonna Command C, Command V. Remember, I turned locking off so that we could copy it with the automation, but you can always just make sure you're looking at the automation to make sure it's copied over. And here, I'm just gonna start building an outro. And let's actually do the hi-hat and snare pattern here. I think there's a little more automation we can do in a moment. And I just realized we have this version that has reverb on some of those snare hits. I think I actually wanna use that again here and duplicate that here. Just a lot of copy and pasting. So we have this end section. Let me start playing from here. One bar before the outro. So it went back to the beginning. Dun, dun. And it would be cool to end on just this chord. So I've duplicated this section. I'm going to shrink it down to just be that chord. Actually, no. Let me undo that. I'm going to take this section right here. I'm going to delete all these notes. And I'm just going to take this chord. I'm going to turn off monitoring so we don't have to hear that. I'm going to stretch it out so that this chord actually holds for four bars. And it will fade out naturally. If you have an instrument that sustains and that actually doesn't fade out naturally, you would just have to automate the volume, which I would recommend again doing with the utility like we did on the guitar track. So we have this now outro. Okay, I think that's pretty fine. I think maybe we could do this. Actually, no, here's what we'll do. I want to just give this a little more reverb, send it out to reverb. Of course, we could put reverb directly on the track, but I think a return reverb will do just fine here. I don't want it to be so dramatic. Let me just hear what this sounds like. And another thing that I will do is filter this out. I could add a filter, but the macro knob actually already has a high cut. Uh, and I'm gonna actually automate this high cut knob to fade out one more time here. Here, so it's not so inaudible. Great, and you know what? I would love to do a similar thing with the electric piano. Let's throw a filter on here. Now I'm gonna grab a filter from here. Boom, perfect. I'm gonna start the automation here the first time this keyboard gets introduced in the outro. We're gonna have it get real low by the time this last chord hits. It might be a little too low. Let's just hear it. 
Maybe we can go a little faster. I'm gonna pull back on the reverb on this instrument. Pull it down in the mix a bit. You know what? We need a utility there. Not just because I want to automate the uh, volume, but also because I want to add a little bit of width. Let's automate this. I'm just going to bring the volume down over time. And, you know, there's a lot of different layers we can put here. Like this bridge section. We could do a little bit more with, probably. We could even add things like effects, different types of noise samples to ease the transitions. But this is just a first step. So if you've never really made music before and you are following along with this series and you've gone from step one to now part 10, I think this is a great way for you to at least start getting your musical ideas down. Going from just having the scratched out ideas in session view to now plotting them over the course of an arrangement. This, I'm just going to say once more, is a very, very basic arrangement of some very basic ideas, that's fine. When you're a beginner, don't overcomplicate things too much. It's where I see beginners start to fall apart with their music and their compositions because it, they're trying to combine too many complicated things and it ends up sounding bad. Practice this method, start simple, and then build on those fundamentals, and then you'll be able to do complicated things that actually sound good. An example of this is we only used sounds and musical ideas that we already created here. If I was approaching this and it wasn't just for a beginner's course, this middle section, I would largely have just plotted out with the ideas we already had, and I would have actually just created new ideas in this B section so that it was more different than the rest. So if you feel like you do want to add more variation, feel free to do that. Continue to work in four bar sections. Maybe even use the instruments you've already had so that you can insert new musical ideas, but it doesn't sound so different. It actually is pulling from the instrumentation you've already used. And then of course you could add new sounds as well, but this is the beginning of an okay arrangement. Where you have clear sections, you have an intro, you sort of have a, first verse type section where things start coming in in full. Then you have a B section where, you know, we lose kick, then we lose bass and it gets a little dreamy. And then we have an end section where everything is playing in full. And we kind of introduce a new top layer melody and we have an outro. With that sort of structure, you can bring your listener along on a journey and it's a more pleasurable listening experience than just having so many things looping over and over again, even though we did base this whole thing on loops. Once you feel like your track is finished or once you just wanna export it and go listen to it on your phone or another device, we can do that very simply. Let's use these brackets to select from the beginning of our track to the end of our track. Now the end of your track might not be the end of your track because sometimes sounds fade out. This sound specifically fades out quite quickly. So I actually can bring this into here. Let's hear this. Let me che check the master level here. When that hits zero, the song is basically done. So I think I can actually make the ending of the song right here, bar 34. And then I'm going to make sure I have everything selected. I'm just going to click on that selection bar. Then we're going to go to file, export audio and video. I'm going to render the master. I can double check the render length. Yes, we want it to be bars one through 33. It doesn't stop at 33, it goes through bar 33. Bunch of rendering options here. You probably don't have to worry about sample rate, either 44, one or 48 is fine. My preferences have been set to 48, so I might as well keep it on 48. File type is important for different compatibility, but WAVE should work in most places. You can also encode as an MP3. At this stage as a beginner, I don't think you need to touch bit depth or dither options. You can also encode as an MP3. Sometimes that's useful if you need a smaller file size than a wave. I usually just keep that on. 
And obviously we're not exporting video today, but we can just click export, which will bring up our folder that we want to save it in. I can call this whatever I want to call it, give it a title, oops, not beginner series, save it, and then it will render and it will be in that folder that you saved it to. And now you've exported your song. All right, that's it. It's finally coming to an end. Episode 10 of the Ableton Live for Beginner series. I hope that I've been able to take you from knowing very little or nothing about Ableton Live to finally being able to create your own music. If that's been the case, I want to hear from you in the comments, on Twitter, on Instagram, everything. Stay tuned and keep your eyes on this channel because there's lots more content already uploaded and coming that's going to help you level up your music and become a better artist. Thank you again to DistroKid for sponsoring this entire series, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.